Passing out materials, recommendation number one, don't use your voice. That was me my first five years, talking about stuff you didn't have yet. Why am I doing that? Anticipatory set. Build up some interest. Credential program. Yay, credential program. But the bigger influence, all my teachers did it that way. What's the problem we face when we do that? We have visual learners in our classrooms. Show of hands, you are a visual learner. It's always half the crowd. If the visual learners could not see what I was talking about, these were wasted words. Because I found myself talking all about it, then passing out the stuff, then having to talk about the exact same stuff again for the visuals. I got some kid going, what about part two? <laughs> I just explained part two. But he couldn't see part two when I was talking about part two, so my part two talk was, I mean, was a whole bunch of that. So I learned, don't talk about anything you pass out. Just pass it out. And if you're worried about losing their attention, well, that's just self-control. And what's self-control without temptation? Another recommendation, don't pass out yourself. Oh man, first five years, I was in lockdown mode. Keep in their seats. Easier to control. Well, no, Rick, the reason they're not good out of their seats, they don't get up out of their seats enough. That's the issue. But I was trying to keep in their seats, which meant I had to pass them out. And here's the deal. Doesn't matter how I pass them out, they've seen all the patterns. So whether I give a chunk of, you know, packets to a table and you guys spread them around, or I got my guys in rows facing the front. Here you go, take one, pass them back, take one, pass them back. Or I do that really rigid, autocratic, total control. I pass them out one at a time myself. They've seen this. So if I'm over here passing out materials, I got kids way over there thinking, it's gonna take a minute to get to us. <laughs> which means a riot erupts over there, which I then have to suppress. And that's the big issue with the obedience culture. We're always trying to suppress their energy and accept the fact you will not win that battle. You are outnumbered. No, the happy, productive classroom takes all the energy they've got and redirects it, uses it. Hey, if these are your materials, shouldn't you guys be getting them? Because if I do all the heavy lifting in the classroom, they'll let me. And since they're not doing a whole lot, they become passive. And passive students always cause problems. So what we did, made the whole thing a very simple routine. Kids like routines. They're predictable, they're safe, they understand them. So I've got a little hotel bell. And I just ring the bell. Now, sounds work because they're limbic. And the limbic is always assessing the environment. It's a part of his job. So I ring that bell. Everyone in class knows exactly what's going on. Omish Morse has materials. Each team sends up a rep. Rep tells me how many they need. Reps take them back and distribute them. And in one week, Passing out materials is automatic. If you can make normally tedious things automatic and engage the kids, happy productive. Oh, by the way, guys, don't forget, when you receive it, just put it down. Don't start work on it. Give me your attention. Again, reasonable teacher request, but again, we're back in this world. I'm saying put it down. Give me your attention. That's the right thing to do. But when the packet hits the student's hand, it just lights up his limbic brain. This is like a limbic carnival. There's a massive amount of reality in my hands right now. And you got students going, wow, this is a lot of pages. Put it down. Oh, it's got boxes to fill in its work. Put it down. Oh, it's got a staple. I got stabbed by a staple last week. Is this one okay? Yeah, that's okay. Oh, look, I can make a telescope out of it. This is awesome. I like this packet already. This is a great packet. It's all limbic brain. Just be patient with that. The routine. Bring the bells. That, that's, that's all real. To put it down, don't look at it. That just takes a while for them. So, we have Natalie, who's going to help pass out. Stack right there. I'm going to be over here. All we need is a rep from your table, tell me how many you need, take them back, distribute them, and by the way, what are you supposed to do when you receive it? I'm going to say good luck with that. <laughs> Show of hands, you looked at your packet when you received it, Come on, let's be honest here. It's a limbic brain, limbic brain. So again, be patient about that. By the way, social talk always occurred whenever I rang the bell, and I had no problem with that. 
They have a natural desire to engage in social talk. And you can't always suppress that. To allow social talk during a non-academic event, why not? Why not? Because here's the cool thing. By allowing social talk, you're providing an opportunity to practice self-control. Because when they finally have the materials, they wrap up their own discussions, bring themselves back to attention. And again, sounds are limbic. Here, here's, here's the nutshell version right here. Here it is. The bell sends an instant message to the limbic brain. The limbic goes, hold it, dude, because the prefrontal cortex is deep in some issue. Might be a math problem. The limbic's going, hey, hold it. We've got to stop for a second. We've got this material thing we've got to do. In elementary, guys, since problem solving is a core principle, I'm going to recommend you don't overstructure the whole bell routine. See, I, had I heard this as a new teacher, I'd have gone back to my classroom and so overstructured the thing. Oh my gosh. Okay, guys, since we're using the bell, I got this chart up on the wall, see? And you got names next to the chart. So this week when I ring the bell, a David comes up, and then next week we'll have new names up there. Yeah, structure in a classroom is a great thing because it feels safe to students. Too much structure is a bad thing because there's no freedom to operate. It's a real balancing act. Because what you're saying is, hey, we got this chart, so that, you know, because we want to take turns coming up, you know, so it's not always the same person. So I got this chart to force you to take turns. Because I guess I don't trust you to take turns on your own. No, my experience taught me, blow up the chart. And I told my guys, every year is the same thing. Hey, since we're using the uh, bell for materials, your team needs a plan for who comes up. So over the next day or two, come up with a plan. And then that's it. That's it. We just roll it forward. I'm using the bell. And now if I say the third day, I ring the bell. Here come five reps calmly from five teams. Here comes Matthew from the red team. And I can tell Matthew shouldn't be coming from the red team. How can I tell? Because the red team's going off. But when I rang that bell, that was like a shot of electricity to Matthew's head. And he, just, he hears the bell and goes, materials! And he jumps up. And he's going, Matthew, Matthew, touch your turn, Matthew, touch your turn. Yeah, you know, Matthew doesn't care. He doesn't care. He's a borderline sociopath. He doesn't care. <laughs> Here's the harsh reality. Matthew is a product of the obedience culture in which he's learned, I do whatever I want until I'm told not to. Matthew, is that your turn? Yeah, I'm going. <laughs> and he comes right up. I need five, Mr. Morris, and I could not give him five. Here's a thought to take back with you. What you allow, you encourage. And I cannot allow team dissension to go unchecked. But I haven't got time for a lecture, and scolding doesn't work anyway. And in a very light spirit. Keep your spirits light. My last 21 years, Title I school down in San Diego. You could not out-heavy some of my students. Don't even try. Keep it light. Someone's got a model being in self-control. Should be me. I need five, Mr. Morris. Actually, you need to go see your team. They're not happy with you. And I ship him back. And they ship up somebody else. And if that were to persist with the red team, then I'm going to crack out core principle number four. I'm going to focus my attention and not do the shotgun approach. Hey, when I ring the bell, your team should not be fighting about who comes up. I got most of my class going, why are you talking to us? Talk to the red team. It's those wing nuts. <laughs> shelter and protect compliant students. Always shelter and protect. Bring your folks to bear and kids who think you're kidding. So I'd, I'd pick my moment when they're on task. I'd come by and see them. Hey, uh, excuse me. Every time I ring the bell, you guys fight about who comes up, and they're going to launch into all the drama and all the emotion and all the blame shifting. Let it go. To me, it's very entertaining. Just listen to all this nonsense, you know. Let it wind. It takes about 20 seconds it winds down on its own. We all done with that? Good. doesn't matter whose fault you think it is. The issue is you fight. I'm guessing you guys didn't come up with a plan. Well, that's why you fight. No, I can't give you a plan. They're so used to the teacher doing everything. You're supposed to make up your own plan. Every other team's got one. That, you want to hear what they're doing? Would that help? Sure. Uh, blue team, each student has a day of the week. That's their plan. Green team, turns out only two kids want to go. Three don't want to go. And so the two who want to go just take turns, and they're all happy with that plan. Yellow team, check this out. Someone brought in a deck of cards. And when they hear the bell, everyone gets one card. High card goes. It's like Vegas. It's very cool. <laughs> Those are all plans. You guys need a plan. Something besides Lord of the Flies, because that's not working for you. <laughs>
Sarcasm is just for you guys. Every successful teacher is able to do this one thing, develop an inner voice the students do not hear. And all those things you feel like saying but really shouldn't say, they got to go somewhere or your head's going to pop. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what we're doing, hit that thumbs up button down below. Hit the subscribe button so you get all the videos that will be coming your way. And something else to think about, maybe share one of these strategies with a teacher at your own site. So again, thanks for watching.